Hello and welcome to What Is It About The Weather? Now, as most of you who follow me either on you know, Twitter or Instagram or anything know, I've been in Santiago, Chile the past couple of weeks. I'd really hope to give a nice Andes background, at least for part of the video recording today. But alas, the weather's giving me more gray skies and actually I can't even see the Andes today. Uh, I've been able to share some great pics, of course, but alas, not so much for this episode. So you're going to have to bear with me as we look at the screen. Now I'm showing you an Android tablet, and this is kind of a short list, I guess, of some of the final apps that I narrowed it down to. We'll let you know that one of my main criteria was trying to find items that were available both on iOS and Android. Not so much the web piece. I'm really focusing on the mobile apps here. I actually prefer a product called WeatherTap on the web, just to pass that along to you. It is a paid service, but it's very good not just for radar, but for satellite. And I do recommend it if, if that's a web platform thing you're looking at. From an app standpoint, though, I didn't find their app was really up to snuff. But as with a lot of things, we're not going to necessarily just give you one app. I am going to give you a couple to choose from, really based on your criteria. Now, before we get into that, I will say that I, I'm also focusing here on radar-specific apps, so that was kind of the goal, because I really view this as a very kind of different thing, and a lot of times radar gets lost in the clutter of other apps, and it's not well suited for the layout, but you may have a local television station or even an in-country scenario. Um, I know in the U.S. the National Weather Service doesn't have a radar app per se, so uh, it doesn't work out real well, but in other countries, you, you know, you, the, the National Meteorology Group may have or you know, weather service or whatever it is in your country may actually have an app and radar may be a part of that. So that may work for you or you know in the US your local television station that may be enough for you. But let's talk about these radar specific apps and maybe narrow in on different cases where these ra a specific app might be best for you. Okay so the first category the pro category. Now there were really two that fell into this. One is called Pickle. It's actually spelled P-Y-K-L and it's a three backwards uh, the other one is Radar Scope, and that's what you're looking at here. This is used like by a lot of broadcast meteorologists, and you can even see it's got a warning overlay. You can purchase a subscription that, that includes lightning data. It costs, you know, there's a, unlike some of them that are free, there is a cost, there is an outlay, but if you're looking for what the pros use and just a high caliber product, it, it gives you all the different visualizations of radar data as well and it's and it's straightforward I found the interface intuitive and it's what I go to you know it's kind of my go-to radar app when I'm looking to get high quality radar data plain and simple uh, this is probably the best one now the limitation that I don't like at least you know in the Android version which we're looking at here and you know I'm sure somebody will tell me if I'm wrong but you're focused in on a given radar site so if I wanted to change to one of these other sites I've got to actually pick it and you'll see how the visualization changes to that loop and the reason is is they're actually working with the raw data which some of them don't some of them just give you images but again if you're looking for what I consider the the best of the pro category radar scope is definitely it so my best radar app award for just the everyday use has to go to my radar they have coverage not only in the US but in areas like Europe and Japan and I know that they're looking at adding other areas for radar sites that are available that they can work with. I like it partly because it does give you these big maps. Certainly we can zoom in, you know, it's an area where there's a little more going on. Uh, but even within that, you're not confined to a single radar. Now, that said, it doesn't have all the, the fancy little nuanced features of a, like a radar scope, uh, all the visualizations that a radar scope may have. But for most people, you don't need all that. I, like I said, I also like the international component to it, and quite frankly, that it's free. It was probably the first of radar apps when I first started using radar apps on, on mobile devices way back, uh, even before the Android and iOS days. It was this type of app, um, but specifically my radar I've been using for multiple years, and even with all the new ones that I downloaded and compared it to, it just it stayed ahead. So. Highly recommend it, free, both on iOS and Android. So my last vote is really more of an honorable mention for a product called Storm from Weather Underground. And I do think they've done a nice job of separating out the critical radar storm-oriented component. And it does even have the ability to do alerts and whatnot as well from just their overall forecast app. Because you know, we've talked about it you know, with Lightning as well. 
Radar or, or storms like this are very much in what we call that now casting category, which when you think about global forecasting models, that's not their focus. They think on longer term, broader time scales. But here, for instance, you, know, we, you can see the different storm tracks that it's trying to project where the storm is going to go. Sometimes they get it right, not always. Depends on the setup. You, know, you can run it through the loop. And here we're going to see recent time and what the behavior's been. They have this future component that you can see over here. Now, my problem with the future, and I will tell you it's been in both the, this app as well as others that have this component, is a lot of times it's a miss. And so I don't necessarily believe in trusting it. I do think it's set up well for maybe certain precipitation style events. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more in the audio about why precipitation is so difficult to forecast. In closing, my app recommendations for radar. Radar scope at the pro level, my radar for international or you know quick looks or you know even probably what I consider the best free radar app and storm is kind of a, a blend between the two it's free which is always a good thing has some of the that pro level interface and I think it has a lot of potential for the future you'll do well with any of those picks next time we're gonna dig in the audio episode a little deeper into the challenges of forecasting precip, even in the short term and why it's difficult. And look at apps that hopefully will help you in that more couple of day to week time frame in trying to plan when rain might come your way. As always, find me on the website, whatisitabouttheweather.com, past episodes there, all the other stuff about how to contact, how to follow, all that stuff can be found there. Of course, Mark, underscore Jelinek, J-E-L-I-N-E-K, Instagram or Twitter if you want to follow me personally as well. You get man, pics from my trip to Santiago or even there. So don't hesitate to get me there. And of course, lastly, the YouTube page where we're going to start the Cloud Series, probably that last week of September. So don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in following that stream because it's not going to be available by the regular episodes. As always, though, of course, have interesting, exciting, enjoyable, fun, whatever kind of weather you may like, and it, keep it safe, of course. This is a two-word super production.